Welcome to Canada Engineering College, Department of Mechanical Engineering. Today, we will be discussing on uh, the Module 2 Mechatronics and Microprocessor on uh, the Lecture 2. In the previous session, we have discussed till the organization of Intel 8085 microprocessor. Today, let us talk about the architecture of Intel 8085 microprocessor. The central processing unit which is built on a single chip, it forms the heart of the computer. The CPU controls all the devices that is connected to it. So here, whatever we see is a microprocessor which consists of registers registers are nothing but memory locations then it consists of ALU which is called as the arithmetic and logic unit and you have timing and control unit and it is interfaced with memory and input output devices which are external to the microprocessor now what are the different sections of a microprocessor the different sections are ALU which is called as the arithmetic and logic unit second one is called as the registers third one is memory and address the fourth is the buses fifth one is the state sixth one is interrupts and seventh one is the assembler so these seven parts are the different sections of a microprocessor here in this sketch we can find the functional organization of Intel 8085 microprocessor. So if the architecture of microprocessor is asked of 8085, this is the sketch that we are supposed to draw. So this particular sketch shows the architecture of Intel 8085 microprocessor which consists of mainly the arithmetic and logic unit, then it consists of registers, stack pointers and program counters. It consists of timing and control unit and whatever thick arrow marks what we see over here they are the different buses it can be data bus or it can be control bus or it can also be utility bus and also address bus so these are the different buses which are shown in thick arrow marks now let us discuss one by one the different components of intel 8085 microprocessor architecture First component is called as the ALU. As you know that in the Intel 8085 microprocessor, the main component present is called as the arithmetic and logic unit. The function of this arithmetic and logic unit is to perform addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, incrementing a value, decrementing a value, comparing two values and then doing some logical operations like and or nand and not Now let us discuss about the registers. The registers are nothing but they are the data storage and manipulators of a microprocessor. The elements in a microprocessor that are programmed for data storage and for manipulation purpose. They are called as registers and they are very small memories within the microprocessor. So registers are the memory locations present inside the microprocessor. What are the different types of registers that we have? In that the first one is called as the accumulator accumulator is having a capacity of 8 bit and it performs the function of arithmetic or logical operations and it shows the result and the data 
Along with this accumulator, there are six general purpose 8 bit registers that is used by a programmer for variety of purposes. And that six general purpose registers, they are labeled as B register, C register, D register, E register, H and L registers. So these are the six general purpose registers that is used by a programmer for variety of purposes. They can be used as an individual register when operating on a 8 bit data and in case if at all the operating size is bigger than 8 bit then we can use it as a combination by comparing it with or by using it as a combination of two registers that is B and C, D and D and H and L. So if the data is small then it can be used as a single uh, uh, register. In case if the data size is bigger than 8 bit then it can be used by combining two registers. The combination has to be made in such a way that it is either B, C, D, E or H. That is the combination which is allowed for storing the data. So if at all we have any data which is much more than 8 bit then the combination of registers should be in the form of B, C or else D, E or else H, L. It is not possible for us to combine B and D. Further, there is a 16-bit register which is used by a microprocessor of 8085 to keep a track of the address of the instruction of the memory that has to be executed next, which is called as the program counter. So, the program counter's function is to tell which, I am, which program is going to be executed next. That program's address will be stored in the program counter. That is the function of a program counter. It points to the address of the next instruction in a memory. So next instructions memory location is identified or shown by using a program counter. Next we have another 16 bit register which is called as the stack pointer and it is abbreviated as SP. SP stands for stack pointer. Now what is a stack pointer and how are the functions of a stack pointer is what we are going to discuss next. During execution of a program, sometimes it becomes necessary to save the contents of certain registers because the registers may be required to be used for some other operations in the subsequent steps. So, in case if at all I want to store any data which has to be used later. So, initially it was stored and later on I am supposed to recall it or I am supposed to reuse it. In that case, I go for the stack pointer. So stack pointers function will be to do two operations which is called as push operation as well as pop operation. What is push operations? The contents are moved to the locations by using the push operations and after completing the operations the saved contents are transferred back to the registers by using the pop operations. In the coming slides we will be discussing in detail about the push and pop operations. The last memory locations occupied portion of the stack is called as the stack top and the stack pointer holds the address of the stack point stack top. Now if you look at this particular sketch you will understand better the understanding of a stack pointer. So stack pointer is telling which is the free location available for storing the data next. Now here the numbers are abbreviated as 500, 499, 498, 497 and 496. Now the stack pointer is shown here, SP, which is the stack pointer is showing here 500. So it is showing that this memory location 499 is available free for storing the data. Up to 500 the data is stored. Next if at all I want to store any data that can be stored in 499. So stack pointer will be pointing the next available free location in the memory. Now when we want to discuss about the push and the pop operation. In push operation, for example, there is two data 3F and FF which is present in register B and register C. This data I want to push it to the next available free location. Now stack pointer will tell me where I am supposed to push it. The next available free location in this particular stack is 1996 because up to 1997 we can see the stack the data is been occupied in 2005 a is stored in 1999 
FF is stored in 1998 2B is stored and in 1997 A1 is stored now the next available free location is 1996 so in 1996 I can store the next data which is 3F now the function of stack pointer is what the next stack pointer will point out and tell see up to here the data is filled next if at all I want to store any data you are supposed to store it above this particular location which is 1966 now after doing the push operation you can see how it is happening I want to store the data 3F and FF the 3F and FF is stored in 1996 and 1995 so 1996 and 1995 was free over here those two locations are occupied by 3F and FF now initially the stack pointer was pointing 1997 now as the data has been occupied by 1996 as well as 1995 the stack pointer will move above and it will point 1995 what is it meaning it is meaning that up to 1995 the data is stored next available free location is 1994 so stack pointer will be pointing in this particular location what is 1995 this operation is called as the push operation now let us discuss about the pop operation okay in pop operation for example i want to remove the two datas which is present in 350 and 349 that is number 10 and 5f so i want to store it in register b and register c the data is 10 and 5f stack pointer is showing the next available free location which is 348 but now my operation is pop pop means to remove the data and store it in some other location not in the stack now i want to remove the data 10 and 5f the data 10 and 5f are removed and it is stored in the memory register b and in memory register c so 10 and 5f are stored in b and c and 10 and 5f whichever in whichever location it was present that is 350 and 349 those two locations are now empty so we can see over here that 349 and 350 is empty and stack pointer was initially showing the next available free location as 349 because 348 was free but now the data 5f and 10 is removed and it is stored in register b and c so the stack pointer moves down and it indicates the location 351 and tells that 351 up to 351 the data is stored next available free location is above it that is 350 so this is called as the pop operation so push operation as well as pop operations are the two operations that is performed by the stack pointer now other than stack pointer there are five flip flops which acts as the status flag so these flip flops are nothing but again they are memory locations which are acting as a status flag it will tell the status of that particular component or that particular operation so what is that that we will discuss in detail here first one is called as a carry flag now in this carry flag what happens is the carry flag is always set to 1 whenever there is a carry from addition operation or a borrow from subtraction operation. So whenever we are doing this binary addition and binary subtraction, if there is a carry of 1, if there is a carry, then the flag is set to 1. That is the function of carry flag. Otherwise, the carry flag will be set to 0. Next one is called as a 0 flag it is set to 1 if the result of the arithmetic or logic operation is 0 so whenever we are doing an arithmetic operation or logical operation and finally the result is coming 0 then the 0 flag is set to 1 if the result is not 0 or if the result is non zero then the 0 flag is set to 0 that is the function of 0 flag next we have a flag which is called as sign flag which is designated by s this is 1 if the most significant bit is 1 otherwise it is 0 so in whichever whenever we have the most significant bit as 1 there are two significant bits one is called as the most significant bit and other one is called as the least significant bit 
whenever the most significant bit is 1 the sign flag is set to 1 and it will become 0 when the most significant bit is 0. Next we have a flag which is called as the parity flag. Here if number of 1 is even then this is set to 1 and if number of 1 is odd then it is set to 0. So in a binary number if the number of 1s for example 1 1 1 1 there are 4 1 in this particular binary number. So if 4 1 means 4 is an even number then parity flag is set to 1 if it is even. If it is odd, if the number of 1 is odd, for example 1, 1, 1, 0, if the parity, if the number of 1s is odd there, in 1, 1, 1, 0, the number of 1s is 3. 3 is an odd number and if it is odd, then the parity flag is set to 0. Next, we have a flag which is called as the auxiliary flag or auxiliary carry flag. This flag, the name as itself indicates, it's a carry flag means whenever a carry is generated from the third bit to the fourth bit from third bit to fourth bit if at all there is a carry then this auxiliary flag is set to one so auxiliary flag is set to one only if there is a carry from third bit to fourth bit third bit to fourth bit if there is a carry auxiliary flag is set to one otherwise it is set to zero that is a function of auxiliary carry. Finally, we have instruction register. During an execution of a program, the microprocessor, it will address some memory which supplies the 8-bit data of the instruction code to the data bus which gets stored in a register which is known as the instruction register. And what is the function of instruction register? The function of instruction register is to hold the operational code of an instruction which is decoded and executed. So, instruction register is going to hold the op code which is the operation code of the instruction which is been decoded and executed thank you